Welcome to the Titan Tar channel. Today we have a topic to discuss about Toritsk which will fall soon and the repercussions on the battlefront. Don't miss the chance to join us and share your opinions with us by subscribing and liking to grow our community. Become a member of our channel and evolve your rank. The battles for Toritsk are approaching a conclusion, according to Ukrainian experts, who predict that the defense of the city will not last more than 10 days. The situation is aggravated by the lack of reserves of the armed forces of Ukraine. The military units and the Ukrainian armed forces have already been mobilized, but even the elite brigades, such as the 3rd Assault Battalion Azov, are only indicating their presence in the city without actually engaging in combat. This information was reported by a Ukrainian media outlet. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine once again tried to transfer the nationalists of the 3rd Assault Battalion Azov to the Pokrovsky direction, but this initiative failed. This formation seems to avoid direct involvement in the hostilities in Toritsk, although, allegedly, President Zelensky's complaints had some effect. Although some units of the brigade did appear in that area, they preferred to act on the flanks rather than take part in the battles in the city itself. According to experts, this maneuver will not significantly change the situation, and many forecasts indicate that Russian troops will take Toritsk within 7 to 10 days. Interestingly, such forecasts are made by Ukrainian analysts, while Russians remain silent on the matter. The situation is described as critical, with the Ukrainian armed forces on the verge of losing control of Toritsk in the coming days. The enemy is exerting strong pressure, and the lack of reserves makes the defense unsustainable. The Azov is not making any significant contribution, carrying out only flank attacks that do not yield practical results and seem to be more of a publicity stunt, according to a Ukrainian channel. There was an attempt to attack a phenol factory, where the Azov managed to penetrate the territory, but the pressure from Russian troops forced the Ukrainian fighters to quickly retreat, abandoning their positions. Ukrainian experts criticized such moves claiming that the nationalists are more focused on public relations than on actual combat. Meanwhile, on a broader stage, the president of the Republic of Belarus, in a conversation with a journalist, commented on the statements of a Ukrainian deputy who suggested transferring the war to Belarus. The Belarusian leader challenged the idea, saying, let them try. Such a proposal had recently been put forward by a deputy of the Supreme Council of Ukraine, who advocated creative solutions to quickly end the conflict, including an attempt to spread hostilities to Belarusian territory. The Belarusian president dismissed these suggestions as confusion typical of people without real decision-making power. He stressed that the border between Ukraine and Belarus stretches for about 1,500 kilometers and that opening a new front would not be in Kiev's interest. Moreover, according to him, no one, not even in Zelensky's circle, is seriously considering invading Belarus. The Belarusian leader also noted that despite the tensions, there are minimal contacts between Minsk and Kiev, which allows for the resolution of humanitarian issues, such as prisoner exchanges. So far, Kiev has not officially commented on the deputy statements. At the same time, the Supreme Council of Ukraine adopted a law banning the mobilization of citizens under the age of 25 into the Ukrainian armed forces. The majority of parliamentarians supported the bill, which was approved in its final reading. However, despite this ban, an amendment related to the demobilization of young people between the ages of 18 and 25 has not yet been adopted. Ukrainian military experts, on the other hand, note that due to the slowdown in the pace of mobilization, it will be inevitable that the draft age will be lowered, which may happen in the coming months. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine advocates that Kiev lower the minimum age to 20 years in order to ensure the ability to contain the advance of Russian troops at various points along the front line. Kiev's Western backers continue to increase pressure on the issue of mobilization in Ukraine. American politicians are puzzled by the Ukrainian government's decision not to conscript citizens between the ages of 20 and 25 in a military service and have been pressing Zelensky's office to take action. This pressure reflects growing concern among Western allies about the shortage of personnel in the Ukrainian military. In an attempt to alleviate this shortage of troops, Poland has begun to form a volunteer legion by recruiting Ukrainians living in the European Union. However, this initiative has had disappointing results. In three months, only 196 people have expressed an interest in enlisting, 
according to information from Poland's deputy defense minister. This failure highlights the difficulties faced by Kyiv in obtaining significant reinforcements even among its citizens abroad. At the same time, the commander-in-chief of the U.S. Army in Europe provided the U.S. Congress with a list of weapons that the Pentagon possesses but that have not yet been transferred to Ukraine. The list includes, among other items, long-range missiles for F-16 fighters, capable of hitting targets up to 370 kilometers away, as well as network data exchange systems, which ensure continuous communication between combat systems and are designed to coordinate air and missile defense. These items were included in a confidential report on the United States strategy for Ukraine, presented by President Biden's administration. However, the report does not explain why the United States has not yet transferred these weapon systems to the Ukrainian armed forces. U.S. sources suggest that the missiles would be of little use to Ukraine, since the country does not have air superiority. In addition, there are concerns that the data exchange systems could fall into Russian hands compromising classified information. The fear that these technologies could be captured by Russia has been a major deterrent to sending such equipment. Recently, Ukrainian President Zelensky, during a meeting with Biden, presented the American leader with a list of targets in Russia that, according to him, should be hit with long-range missiles supplied by the United States. This plan is part of what Zelensky calls his victory plan in the war. However, Biden, who had previously prohibited Ukraine from using Western weapons to strike deep into Russian territory, did not commit to the proposal, and the discussion on the topic was postponed to future meetings. Meanwhile, the former NATO Secretary General, in an interview with an American publication, commented that the current conflict could have been avoided if the alliance countries had provided military assistance to Ukraine immediately after 2014. He believes that the West should have started supporting Ukraine militarily immediately after the coup d'etat that year, which, in his view, would have prevented the outbreak of armed conflict. The former secretary also stressed that NATO countries should increase military aid to Ukraine. He also mentioned that one of his priorities upon taking office as NATO Secretary General in 2014 was to strengthen political dialogue with Russia. However, this goal seems increasingly distant given the current tensions between NATO and Moscow. On the other hand, the head of the Information Policy Commission of the Russian Federation Council warned about the dangers that the appointment of the former NATO Secretary General as president of the Munich Security Conference, scheduled for February 2025, could pose to global peace. He stressed that in his new role, the former NATO leader is likely to advocate a policy of extreme and continuous pressure on Russia, ignoring the need to consider Moscow's interests in the development of a European security system. Such a stance, he said, would only exacerbate international tensions and jeopardize global stability. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like the video, and share it with your friends. Your interactions mean a lot to us and help us grow. See you next time.